Hi guys, in this video we will learn how to unpivot columns dynamically. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Check out this table. Now let's go to Power BI. Most of you may already know that the best way to unpivot columns in this situation would be selecting the customer attributes, in this case customer country and birth date, then right click and choose unpivot other columns. In this way, no matter how many month columns we have to the right, they will all be unpivoted. Let me add November and December to the database. And now, refresh the query to see the result. As you can see here in the attribute column, the last two months were added to the query. However, if we'd like to add a new customer attribute to the database, then this will not work. The new attribute will be unpivoted together with the months. Let me show you by adding the email column to the database. Now let's refresh. And you can see here that the email was also unpivoted. And that's not what we usually want. The problem is that the first three columns were hard-coded right here. And this is the part where we want to be dynamic. I was inspired by this video from Goodly, where he does the same thing, but here I would like to try a different approach and reduce the number of steps in Power Query and end up with the same result. His solution relies mostly on the user interface buttons, which is perfect, but here we'll need to explore the M language a bit more. Let's delete this step. And now let's click the FX button and add a new step. Here we will use the table.columnNames function to retrieve the headers of each column. I will rename this step to column names just for better readability. Now we will transform the values of this list to date, so we can differentiate the month columns from the customer attributes. For this, we will add a new step and use the list.transform function. Using the previous step name, type each and then concatenate 0, 1 in double quotes. Type ampersand and the current row, which we refer using underscore, and then close parentheses. For now, you can see that it was only added 0, 1 before each header. In order to transform to date, we need to use the date.from function right here. As you can see, the customer attributes obviously cannot be converted to date, but we also don't want to see that error value, we want the actual header name. So let's type try before converting to date, and otherwise we want to retrieve the name in the current row. We are almost there. I will just rename this step to transform to date. Again, this is for better readability only. And now we will add a new step that will select the header by checking if it is a date or not. So let's use the list.select function referring to the previous step and then type each and let's check if the current row is date. You can see that only the dates were selected, but we want the customer attributes instead. So let's type not and then put the rest in parentheses. And voila! We got the headers we want. Let me just rename this to keep headers. Now let's go back to the navigation step where we have our data untouched. And then use the unpivot other columns on the first two columns on purpose. I know this is not correct, I'm just doing like this so we can see how the columns will be fixed by the end of this query. Copy just the step that it refers to, which is this customer table, and move this step to the end of the apply steps list. Now just replace the step it refers by pasting the one we just copied. The final touch, we just need to remove the hard-coded values. 
and use the step name which has the columns we want. Watch how the list will be fixed. If you have any suggestions, please post in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.